Welcome ladies, I'm Kelsey Hogenkamp and I'm so excited that you're here today. I really believe that God has something special for you and for me, so let's just open up our hearts and our hands and our minds just to receive what the Lord wants to give us today. Amen? All right, so I just want to share with you a story from my life and be really open with you. Um, a few months ago, well, several months ago, we were in a planning meeting for this very conference. And we were all sitting around the table and we were discussing what we wanted included in this meeting, in this conference. And, you know, we wanted worship, we wanted a creative element, um, we wanted a main speaker. And then um, we came up with TED Talks and we wanted them filled by our team. And so Carol starts asking, you know, who would like to fill these roles? And as soon as she said, I want people from our team to fill these roles, I heard so clearly in my heart, the Lord whisper to me and say, Kels, the doubt one is yours. And I was like, okay, Lord. And then I was like, wait, what? No, uh, -uh. like uh, you got the wrong person. You got the wrong girl. I must be hearing things. Kels, I want you to do the doubt one. Trust me. And I remember everything just getting quiet in my seat and having this conversation with the Lord. And it, it felt like all my breath was like taken away. And I was sitting in that moment wrestling with the Lord. And as I opened my mouth to take a breath, literally the words like, fell out in a jumble. And I was like, I'll take the doubt one. And I took a deep breath and I was like, no. Cause you know, has that ever happened to you? Like you agree to something cause you feel the Lord leading. Um, but then immediately you regret it. And <laughs> I'm just reliving it as I'm talking to you. Um, and I, I I agreed to it and I knew the Lord was um, wanting me to go there, but I didn't really think it through. And um, I like to call that divine stupidity, right? Where it's a divine moment, you know the Lord is speaking, but you don't really have a chance to think it through. And bam, it's like he gets you because he knows that you would probably talk yourself out of it. And that's what happened to me. And so I'm sitting there I'm driving home from our meeting and just realizing what I had done and um, like crashing waves, all of a sudden, all these thoughts, doubts start flooding my mind. You can't do this. You're so out of practice. You're not qualified. And me telling the Lord, I'm not qualified. I can get you the names of people that are. Just hold on one second. Let me write them down for you. Um you know, do you have the right person? God, are you sure I have what it takes to get this done? And I drove home and I just thought of those doubts and they just kept coming. Have you ever been in one of those moments? It's, um, yeah, it's just, you feel really unsure and really doubtful. And a few, um, a few months earlier, I was in a similar situation and I was asked to teach and train at a um, training in a ministry that we were a part of at the time. And again, I, I was really excited, super nervous, basically same scenario, doubts start flooding in the minute I say yes. But this time I, um, I fed on them, I entertained them, I let them take over my thought life and basically what ended up happening was I gave myself shingles. I almost got in a car accident because my mind was racing as I was driving to a coffee house to go prepare and all these doubts just kept hitting me and I let them and I didn't fight back. And, um, and so I eventually ended up backing down from this commitment and somebody else had to do it for me. And that was really hard because it was in that moment that I realized I let my fears and my doubts take away my opportunity for impact in that moment. And 
looking back at it, I was devastated. It wasn't my heart. It wasn't what I wanted to do. And I really had to walk through those emotions with the Lord and heal from that. And I began to ask the Lord to teach me and to guide me and to show me how to not let doubt and fear um, win again and have a victory in my life again. I wanted to overcome. And he led me to Matthew 14. We all don't know the story of Peter and walking on water with Jesus, right? Uh, Peter asks, Jesus, is that you? He says, yes, come. Peter steps on the water and starts walking on the water, right? His eyes are locked with Jesus's eyes. And, but then for a moment, he hears or sees the storm raging around him. And so he chooses to take his eyes off the Lord and look at his fears, his doubts, the storm next to him. And what happens? He sinks. God sweeps him up, rescues him and says, you have little faith. Why did you doubt? And um, I felt like the Lord through this story gave me three keys of how to help me move away from my fears and my doubts and help me move toward the impact that I know he's created me for. And I hope in sharing them today that it will help you push you toward the impact that he's created for you today. And so the first one is choosing where we're going to lock our eyes, choosing to lock our eyes on God. And um, just like Peter, he chose. And just like us, we, um, we get to choose every day who where we're going to look, right? Um, it says in Joshua 24, 15, choose this day who you will serve. And for me, that was, I get to choose every day with my thoughts who I'm going to serve. Am I going to serve my fears and my doubts? Or am I going to am I gonna serve the Lord? And I think as women, our mind is a powerful place and we get to choose what thoughts we let in and who they're going to serve and what they're going to enter entertain. And we get to feed those thoughts or starve those thoughts and the control and power is ours. Um, and the next thing the Lord kind of unlocked to me was knowing your identity. Peter needed to know who Jesus was. He needed to know that that was him. And I think this was a big one for me. I needed to know my identity and the Lord really dug deep in my heart with this one because we have to know who our God is. We have to know who we are because when things come around us, our fears and our doubts and just circumstances come to challenge it, if it's not anchored and strong, we'll get knocked over and we'll get swept away because it's got to be our anchor. And in Proverbs 3.26, it says, um, uh, for the Lord will be your confidence and will keep your foot from being caught. And in Deuteronomy 31, 8, it says, your God is for you. He's not against you. He will never leave you or forsake you. In fact, he goes before you. And what God says over me and who he says I am, he tells me in Ephesians 2, 10, I am uniquely created for great works. And he also tells me in Romans 12 that I am fearfully and wonderfully made. And he's given me a purpose and he's given me a special gift and he's faithful. And knowing deep down who God is and who you are is what is going to move us forward into our impact. And that's my third one, moving forward in faith about what we do know. And um, I love this quote from Christine Kane in her new book, Unexpected. And um, she talks about how, uh, oh, this is her quote. I do things afraid and I place what I know about God higher than what I don't know about the future. And I think that's so powerful and hits right on the head what I'm trying to communicate today. There's always going to be fears and doubts. There's always going to be things that we don't know or that are uncertain. And just like Peter, there was things he didn't know that were uncertain. But we can place our identity, what we know about God, who we know God is, higher than any of those other things. And we get to choose that and move forward in faith. 
And so let's be women that choose to move forward in what we know and what we do know and not give so much power to what we don't like I did in my story. Um, I'm convinced that God has an impact for you and that God has an impact for me. And the only way that we're not going to give it away to fear and doubts is um, through these three keys, choosing to lock eyes with God, knowing our identity is in Christ and he is in us and um, moving forward in faith in what we know. And so, ladies, I just hope and pray that that encourages you today. I know the Lord encouraged it with my heart as we were walking through it. Um, And I, I just pray that it helps move you forward in the impact that God has for you today. So I love you. Have a great day. And thanks for joining us.